Superbooth 21, here it is Tom from Cinematomy. I'm here on the booth of the French company Audio Instruments, or it's called... Audio Instruments. It's okay. Audio Instruments, yes. Okay. Um, I briefing a um, see your uh, name in a Kickstarter, is that right? Yes, so we recently uh, did a Kickstarter for Animafi. Uh, it's a physical modeling synthesizer. Um, so it has a modular architecture as well as an addition matrix um, and a built-in piezo microphone. So you can combine all of that to make some really interesting uh, natural sounds. And um, I, if I remember right, it was a success for you. You, uh, you could develop it further and uh, bring it to the market. Sorry, can you... I, f um, I remember it was uh, it was successful this, yes. the, the Kickstarter, and you could develop it further, even add new features to it. And yeah. uh, is it already out, or is it is still in development? No, so the Animafi now has been out for a few months. So we've shipped uh, all of the Kickstarter units, uh, and now we are waiting to produce a second batch. Okay. So second series, uh, which we should start shipping in, in November. So it's uh, it's entirely use physical modeling. So it's only uh, physical modeling synth. No, so it's uh, physical modeling is uh, the main part of it, and that's um, how we're selling it. But it can also do uh, more traditional analog modeling, um, and it can also it also has some digital uh, synthesizers, uh, digital oscillators. Sorry, okay. uh, like um, there is a voice uh, voice synthesizer like a vowel um, creator, form and filters, like that kind of things, uh, as well as uh, different effects. So it can also be used as an effects processing unit. Uh, so it's very versatile. I'm, uh, I'm always happy to see physical modeling in hardware because it's so raw. I, I, I don't know why. Is it too expensive or is it too difficult to realize? I don't know. Okay, so um, essentially, one of the reasons was during the 80s and 90s, it was quite popular, uh, but then it took a lot of processing power, and at the time they didn't have that available. So then uh, physical modeling took kind of, uh, was kind of uh, on the side for a while, and recently it's become a lot more prevalent in um, VSTs, so on computers. And so we thought, okay, why not make like a small portable uh, physical modeling synthesizer? Okay, so it's... Uh, it Pretty much, it can produce pre uh, pretty sure percussive stuff, uh, strings, or, or is it more versatile? Yeah, so there is a, there is a lot of different things. There's um, string models. There is uh, reed models. So for wind instruments, there's like flute models. Uh, there's uh, some percussive sounds as well, uh, as well as the uh, digital oscillators that I was talking about earlier, and also some uh, analog modeling uh, oscillators. So the first sound I'm going to play is, um, was, uh, some of you may recognize it from the initial product demo. And uh, this is a string model, and uh, this sound is called Lara G+. see so on the mod matrix there's a lot of different functions that affect uh, the sound so for example the geometry there's material and each of these um, is tuned to a parameter to affect uh, the way the model responds and to affect the sound uh, one of the most drastic changes is the morph function so morph can change between two states of a patch. Right. Uh, I can show some other sounds maybe. Uh, so this is one of the, um, this is like a flute sound. It's called muta flutes. Uh, so it's a flute sound with also kind of like a bass uh, synthesizer added to it. So it sounds like this. And 
And we are talking here about a monophonic synth, not a polyphonic one. Yes, so it's monophonic. Exactly. So we, so we can expect maybe in the future in an Anima Pro or with polyphony. I hope so. Uh, I guess uh, we'll find out. Um, I'm, I know uh, physical modeling is not the easiest synthesis. There are often a lot of parameters. It's unknown territory. But how do you manage this for making this more accessible? Is it, you have created a special menu system or a uh, or simplified parameters? Uh, yeah. So basically. Um First, everything is editable directly on the anima. So for example, if you take like uh, this patch, this is like a piezo patch. So tapping on it activates the piezo um, and it activates the sound and you can edit everything. So let's say uh, I want to change uh, the way that the geometry behaves. So I can change that and then I can change uh, here and you can hear that quite clearly. That's just the addition of it, uh, and that's quite simple to do once you get the hang of it. But um, there's also an editor that's available on the computer that it connects directly to the animacy and allows you to see the whole patch as well as uh, change all the parameters in real time. And save all your patches, export the banks, uh, import patches and banks that you can create and you can share them uh, on our forum or online with your friends. Okay, and as uh, you demonstrated right now, uh, right before, it's it's a piezo included, or it's so it's right on the interface, right? Yeah, so there's a piezo mic that's located right here, um, and so tapping anywhere on the anywhere on the anima feed activates the piezo mic, and um, you have to program it into your patches. But so what that does as well is it connects to the line input, which is right here. Um, and so that allows you to connect something like a, a guitar or a synthesizer and use it as an effects unit. Okay. So the, when you don't have that connected, there is the piezo mic and when you connect something, it disconnects the piezo. So you are using probably, again, uh, in physical modeling is always with resonators and with uh, exciters. Yeah. Uh, what kind of exciters are you using? Is this noise probably or... Is this... uh, I can show you. So there's uh, model resonators as well as string resonators. Um, so could you, for, for example, use a um, an input for as uh, exact exciter? Uh, yeah, you could. Yeah, so you can get uh, on the input, you can get something like an envelope follower, and then make it um, make it uh, modulate another part of the um, of the patch, for example. Uh, so you can use the input and mix it in with anything and uh, all that, yeah. So you have different uh, exciters, so you could create a uh, different uh, sound to a lot. Uh, there are also an effect uh, section in included. Yeah, so there is uh, five effects per patch and effects include things like uh, delays and chorus and, uh, and uh, some of the resonators as well. Um, as well as... Uh, yeah, chorus effects, all that. Okay. There's also modulator slots. So there's 16 modulators. So that's uh, the LFOs. Uh, there's some mathematics modules. There's envelopes, things like that. Um, as well as 32 mapping slots. And I saw that uh, you have a good range of connectivity, especially I like the USB host. Yeah, so the connectivity is uh, there's stereo line output. Uh, there's a stereo line input. Uh, there's headphones output, which is also stereo, obviously. Uh, then there's the MIDI DIN, in and out. And uh, like you said, there's uh, the MIDI USB host. And there's also a USB device connection for connecting it to the computer. Okay. And uh, like before we said, um, the interface is very a bit, a bit like the Blofeld or some world of using the a matrix. Yeah. So you have, um, if I now understand it correctly, you, uh, you get for every step, you get the four encoders. You get for every line of the matrix, ah, you get yeah. four and yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, so you can select which line you're on, uh, and it's c indicated quite clearly with the two LEDs. And then you just switch, uh, switch lines like this. 
and uh, and then you can change the parameters with this, and it shows it quite clearly on the screen. Mm -hmm. There's a, a zoom function where if you're uh, changing a parameter, it will zoom in on it, mm -hmm. and then show it very clearly like this. Okay. Uh, can we get some more sounds of it? Yeah, of course. It sounds interesting because I'm very um, into physical modeling since yeah. I really liked even in, in VSD and now to have one in hardware is again very cool. Um, Anima, as you said, is already on the market? Yeah, so the Anima fee is uh, it's available from uh, most of the major resellers like Thomas, Schindler's Laden, all that. It's also available directly from us uh, at the moment because of the electronics parts shortage. Uh, we're having uh, we're having a bit of time to uh, before we can create the second batch, but we're hoping to start shipping that uh, in November. And it's uh, how much? It's 499 euros. Okay. And so we can expect also major uh, firmware updates in the future. I think you have uh, in the Kickstarter already a lot of on, on the list what is coming. So. Yeah. No. So we already uh, we've already released quite a few different updates. Um, we take a lot of feedback from our users, so there is uh, like a whole community forum where people can post uh, their patches, but also uh, what features they'd like to be added. Okay. And we've already added quite a lot of those, like uh, the zoom function, like things like that. Okay. Um, and we're going to keep producing updates. And it comes uh, free with the editor? Yes, yes, the editor is completely free. All the updates are free as well. And it's, uh, the editor is PC Mac here? Uh, it's uh, PC or Mac, wh whichever one you want. Okay. Then uh, big thanks for uh, the interview, and I wish you good luck with your with Anima fee. And a good Super Booth 21. Uh, big thanks. And, ho and hope to see you again very soon in our next Cinematomy videos here from the Super Booth 21. Bye.